Hey everybody, Jazzy here. I wanted to throw you another beginner's guide, and this one is going to focus on some strategies for avoiding starvation in every season. Depending on the time of year, certain food sources will not be available, and your diet may have to be modified to accommodate what you are able to find and produce. That said, it's mostly a matter of understanding what options you have for growing and cooking. Once you know where to get food, collecting it is usually the easy part. This is not a comprehensive guide on food management or infrastructure. I'll mention stuff like honey and eggs, but this guide is mostly focused on the sources of food unique to each season, and less so on everything you can do to manage your food supply. So let's get started. In autumn, you have the most options of any season. You can plant berry bushes, you can punch butterflies, or just, you know, eat carrots that you find all over the map. It's the easiest season to just travel around, so foraging for food is the most feasible during this time. And if you're mapping out the world in your first autumn, then you'll want to stay on the move as much as possible. One thing I always recommend to beginners is learn how to get large meat. While morsels are easier to acquire, they're not always worth the investment of time that could be spent getting better food. Large meat can be found all over the world. You got tall birds in the mosaic in the rocky biomes, you got pigs in forests, you got koalaphants at the end of hunts, you got volt goats in the oasis desert, and beefalo in the savannah. Learn how to kite these mobs and farm their drops. Because just a few chunks of flesh will provide an entire day's worth of hunger. Always cook your meat on a fire because it removes the sanity penalty and increases the spoilage time. If large meat is not available, then monster meat can be harvested from spiders in the forests and hounds from hound waves. It's not ideal, but in a pinch, you can cook it up and eat it. Cooked monster meat hurts you for 3 health and 10 sanity, and the health loss can be easily supplemented with a few butterfly wings. If you're setting up a base, then autumn is a good time to build farms for food production. Now, this can range from berry bushes, spider dens, stone fruit, or bee boxes. But my personal favorite is pigs. Hammer some pig houses in the wild and rebuild them around a bait pen. And then on a full moon, you can throw on some armor and kill the were pigs. Each one drops two meat. In your crock pot, you can cook a meaty stew from one monster meat, two large meat, and an edible filler. The dish will provide two full days worth of hunger, and is one of the most important recipes for you to learn. After pigs, to me, the most valuable source of food is farm plots. I'd recommend getting started on crop farming as soon as you start basing. At a science machine, prototype a garden digamajig, then deploy it on any tile to convert it into a farm plot. Dig up the detritus with a shovel and use a hoe to- wait, wait, detritus? That's really how you say it? Detritus. Okay, fine, the jazz man abides. Because, you know, I would hate to be seen shirking my responsibilities and showing my ignorance by teaching my followers how to mispronounce words. I should be truly ashamed to be mispronouncing words in my videos. I have failed you all. Hit the dislike button. Just kidding. Now, say it with me, Google. Melee. 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 Melee! Farm plots can provide massive amounts of food, and you can grow crops in every season. There are some amazing hunger crops worth growing in autumn, such as pumpkins, potatoes, tomatoes, and eggplants. The last three are also very good for healing when you cook them up, so it's absolutely worth your time to farm in this season. Just plant all your generic seeds and dig up the weeds such as forget-me-lots, tillweed, and fire nettles. You'll get specific seeds after the first harvest, and you can continue to grow the crops you like. Now, winter is the season that usually gets players nervous thinking about food. That's because several food sources will stop producing, such as buzz boxes and dingleberry bushes. In spite of this, most sources of food will continue to grow in winter. That includes farm plots, rock avocados, kelp, and cactus. Aside from lure plants, all of your meat sources are still around. Plus, you will get an additional source of meat from the walruses, which you'll be hunting to get your tam and walking cane. Cactus will come in handy during the season because your sanity will be draining a lot more due to the long dusk and night. Not to mention giant ice monsters that suck up your sanity like a vacuum cleaner. Fortunately, cactus still grows in winter, and cooked cactus heals 15 sanity. Ice can be mined from the glaciers that spawn around pangle nests in winter, and it's something of a universal crockpot filler. For cheap healing, you can cook bunny stew from a morsel and two ice, but the easiest solution for hunger has been, as always, 
Meta balls made with monster meat and three ice. If you find gears and build an ice box, you can store your ice indefinitely. So try to collect as much as possible before winter ends. You can keep growing farm plants in winter, and because of the cold, watered plots will stay hydrated for much longer. Pumpkin and potato are still in season, plus now you get asparagus. If you're gonna eat the asparagus, then be sure to cook it up so you get 25 hunger. If you need sanity, then you can make vegetable stinger from asparagus, ice, and two other veggies. You'll still get carrots and garlic in winter, so you should have plenty of veggies for filler. Another crockpot dish worth mentioning is creamy potato puree made from two potatoes and one garlic, both of which are in season during winter and autumn. This dish restores a respectable amount of both health and sanity, and I will forever regret trash talking the dish in my Warley guide. And what does garlic get? Creamy potato puree? Nailing it, garlic. If you only have potatoes to work with, then feel free to make fancy spiral tubers with the potato, two twigs, and a filler. These are great for hunger and sanity. In spring, the butterflies come back along with your berry bushes, bee boxes, and lure plants. So you will have tons of options for farming a variety of foods in this season. In addition, spring is one of the best times for farm plants, as the vast majority of crops will be in season and rains will keep the plots naturally hydrated, which will produce more seeds. There are two new sources of spring meat. The first is frog rain, which is basically what it says it is. An occasional event during which frogs fall from the sky like little green horsemen of the apocalypse. If properly farmed, they can provide a player with well over a stack of frog legs, which can be cooked into meatballs or froggle bun witches, converted into eggs at a birdcage, or whatever you do with morsels. Now, the key to a successful frog rain is getting the frogs to aggro onto another mob that will kill a good amount of frogs before dying. My personal choice for this task is beefalo, which will be in heat in this season and immediately aggro onto most mobs. Most healthy sized herds will have no trouble mowing through a horde of frogs, but if you notice that too many beefalo start to die, just run away to despawn the frogs. Once the rain is over, throw on a beefalo hat and run back in to collect the loot. The other new source of meat in spring is moose goose. Now being a giant, it is not the most beginner friendly resource, but suffice it to say, if you are hunting for down feathers, you can easily stock up on tons of meat. Killing a single moose goose plus all five mosslings will net you 11 large meat and seven drumsticks. If you make meaty stew, then that's more than half a season worth of hunger, taken care of in a single fight. Once you get confident in your kiting skills, I'd consider giving moose goose a try. It's time very well spent. Lure plants will spawn during spring and you wanna collect as many of these as possible. Eye plants won't spawn on sandy turf, rocky turf, lunar turf, a boat, or any crafted flooring. So if you plant lure plants nearby, you can easily harvest leafy meat every few days. Now leafy meat can be treated as large meat in a crock pot, as long as you only use one at a time. But it also has four special recipes, and for hunger, there is one I would highly recommend. And that is beefy greens one leafy meat and three full value veggies like cactus, stone fruit, or any farm veggies. It's great for both hunger and health. A few lure plants and a desert full of cactus is all you need. Would you like to hear more about cactus? That's great, because it actually gets better once summer starts. If you're trying to avoid the wildfires by basing in the oasis desert, then you get both flesh and a flower each time you harvest a cactus. The flower can be eaten raw and restores a little bit of every stat. And when you combine this with the restoration of cooked cactus flesh, you are suddenly getting 9 health, 20 sanity, and 25 hunger from a single cactus. The plant takes four days to regrow, which means in summer, you can cycle through 12 cactus for all of your hunger needs. If you need extra healing, then just cook up a single flower with three cactus flesh for a salad, which restores 40 health. Honestly, for the first few summers in the oasis, you really don't need much aside from cactus and lure plants. The oasis also becomes a great source of freshwater fish during summer. You can eat the fish raw with no penalty, or you can make fish sticks in a crock pot from a fish, a twig, 
and two edible filler. With three fish and a monster meat, you can make surf and turf, which is such a good recipe, I will praise it repeatedly in the same video with minimal shame. You can also use farm plots in summer, and the plants will actually grow a bit faster because of the long days. You just have to stay on top of the watering because the ground will dry out faster. Fortunately, your watering can is very easy to keep topped off at the oasis. Dragon fruit is in season, and if you get one, then you should cook it into dragon pie. The dish restores the same stats as beefy greens, but lasts longer. Just add a few twigs into the crock pot and you're all set. Pomegranates and tomatoes are also in season, and both could be cooked up for an easy 20 healing if you're out of cactus flowers. It should be noted that any surface base you build outside of the sandstorm will be subject to wildfires, so be aware of the danger if you plan to stay topside during this season. If you're trying to get out of the heat, then you might want to consider hanging out in the caves during summer. The temperature is mild, and wildfires are not a threat. Regarding base location, there's options. If you're into farming, then you're going to want to find a spot in the slimy turf biomes with a shaft of light. Your crops won't grow unless they get natural sunlight and you can usually find a couple good spots near most stairways. These locations have added value in safety because if you hear depth worms growling, then, you know, just run up the stairs with your tail between your legs to cancel the attack. Also found in caves are bunnymen villages. While their drops are not as great as they used to be, bunnymen are still a decent source of meat and carrots and only take a day to respawn. Easiest way to kill bunnymen is to befriend one or two with carrots and start a civil war. This is a really good skill to acquire in the game, and once you get the hang of it, you can obliterate an entire village of bunny men and collect all the food. In the description, I'm going to link to Helicalpuma's video demonstrating the fake attack needed to start this process. It works with pigs as well, but it's really efficient with bunny men. Try to grab dropped carrots right away before they eat them, but do not pick up the meat until the bunnies go home. If they see you with meat in your inventory, they will activate vegan rage mode and transform you into a ghost with their teeth. Between all the spiders and depth worms, you can grab plenty of monster meat. If you brought down a bird, then you can use it in a bird cage to convert extra meat into eggs and use that in a crock pot. Another great source of veggies in the caves is the mushroom forests. There's one for each corresponding color, and they will be filled with mushrooms that you can pick for crock pot filler. Raw blue caps are awesome for health, Cooked green caps are great for sanity, and cooked blue caps are phenomenal for memes. You can also chop some of the trees for extra caps, just know that they will not grow back in a survival world. The best food source in the caves, though, is the wilds. This biome can be found connected to the muddy light bulb field in the center of the map, and contains a few extremely noteworthy food sources. The first is lichen, which is basically a crazy relative of carrots. You know, it's it's kind of like that distant cousin with questionable political views that you just try to ignore during the holidays. It grows in very large patches, so you can easily grab a stack in a couple of minutes. Now these make great filler for meatballs, meaty stew, pierogi, and dragon pie. You can also just eat them raw. They will make you cray cray, but if you're in the caves, you're likely insane already, so have at it if you also like nightmare meat. The only caveat, caveat. about lichen is that it spoils in two days. So don't waste time after picking. Either eat it or throw it into a crock pot as soon as possible. The other great food source in the wilds is eel ponds. Eels are very easy to catch with a fishing rod that you can prototype at a science machine. And because you will usually find large groups of ponds in the wilds, you can alternate between each pond while fishing and give them time to regenerate. Eels have a few uses in crockpots, such as fish sticks and unagi. But my favorite option is, say the line, Jazzy. Surf and turf. Yay! Cook up two eels and two monster meat and enjoy your 33 sanity and 60 health. You're not gonna stay sane in the caves, but it's fun to try. And just like that, you've survived an entire trip around the sun. Autumn is back and you can continue to gather and build your big beautiful base on the surface. Take my word for it. By the second or third year, hunger becomes much less of a concern than the seasonal dangers of the late game, such as hound waves, 
depth worms, and server lag. With proper management of food sources, you will eventually end up with more food than you could ever need to survive. But in the early game, exploring is the biggest priority, so that later you know where you can go to gather more food. Happy thriving in the constant. Let me know in the comments what food farms you rely on for sustenance. Every player is going to have their own survival style, so take what you want from this info and turn your world into your very own all-you-can-eat buffet. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.